So in this video, I want to reveal the one thing that you must understand in order to improvise, and it's not what you think. Hey, Donna here from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site to boost your playing up to the next level. Now, in this video, I want to reveal that one thing that you must understand, and I want to help you understand the basics of it so you can move forward with your improvisation. Now, before I go on, hey, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button so that you'll be the first to access my weekly videos. Okay, here we go. The one thing you must understand in order to succeed at improvisation, and I don't care if it's jazz, if it's your church music, um, if it's rock, blues, doesn't matter. That one thing you must understand are intervals. Now, most people avoid any type of music theory talk because they think it's like a disease, <laughs> okay? They're afraid of it. Um, or they avoid it because they think it's just too hard to understand. So why bother? All right, but here's the thing. If you want to do really well with improvisation, you got you have to have some knowledge of theory, all right? You don't have to understand the latest ways to do substitutions, but there are certain things that you need to understand, and one of them is definitely intervals, all right? Why intervals? Well, we need intervals to construct scales, to construct chords, to understand um, what the chords are, to hear what the chords sound like, all right? So let me get to the real basics. What is an interval? Well, the interval, an interval is a distance between two separate pitches. Let me use a piano. Uh, I'm going to use an online piano to illustrate this point. Okay, so an interval. Well, I'm going to use this online um, virtual piano uh, keyboard here, and I'm going to put the link in the show notes so you could access this. All I did was a Google search, to be honest with you, and I thought this one would be the best one for our purposes right now. So I'm just using the keyboard on my laptop. So... Here's my low C. Okay, so the distance between two separate pitches, let's say a C and a D. I'd want to figure out that interval, all right? And there's two ways, yeah, there's two ways that you could pretty much approach this, all right? One way would be to understand, like, what key you're in. So, for example, we're going to be in the key of C, all right? The key of C, no flats, no sharps. So in order to understand the intervals that are within that scale, um, that are diatonic, meaning within the scale, all I need to do is start from that, that bass note, which is C, and count up. All right, so from C to D, it's two notes. It's the interval of a second, and it sounds together like this. Now that's kind of on the low range of things. So let me find this in an upper octave. That's a little better, huh? <laughs> okay. That's not so bad. Down here, a little clashy, okay? Um, but it's not awful. All right, so that's the interval of a second, all right? Now, what if I want the interval of a third? Okay, so what I do, I start, let's say, key of C. Um, I'm going to say that the note C here is going to be the starting note to find the interval. And I'm going to count up three. So C, D, E. So this. Together. Okay, pretty basic for the most part. So the, the key, no pun intended, the key to remember is that you have to start counting from the, uh, the, the note that you're starting from. Let's say I wanted to do in the key of D, all right? So the key of D is two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. And I wanted the third interval in the key of D. All right, so here's my D right here. And I wanted to get the third. So we have D, E, F sharp. So it's going to be here to here. Together. Okay, pretty basic, right? All right. Um, and I apologize, the keyboard's a little clunky, but that's okay. As long as you can hear it, as long as you understand these concepts. Now, some people, you know, um, may count up a little bit differently. They may count up using what's called semitones. If you want to understand semitones, just think of it as half steps. All right, so half steps would be like a chromatic scale. So if I start on the note C right here on my keyboard, it's a Q, okay? 
And I'm just going to go up in half steps. I'm going to do a chromatic scale like this. Okay, that was really clunky, <laughs> but you got the point though. Everything was a half step away. Now, some people may want to count the interval between a C and an E in half steps. So it would be, we're counting the half step intervals in this case. We're not going C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, five. No, we're counting the semitones, the half steps in between. So C to C sharp is one, C sharp to D, that's another one. D to D sharp or E flat, that's a third, and then D sharp to E, that's four. It's four semitones away. I personally don't think that way. Um, I like to think in terms of uh, the key that I'm in and then count up from there, okay? Your choice how you want to count the intervals. Now, what are the intervals called? All right, so the major intervals, the major sounding intervals are the second. So we're gonna go here. The third. The sixth, so that's going to be C up to A, C, D, E, F, G, A. So that's going to be over here. C. And finally, the seventh, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Okay, so it's going to be here. Together. Okay, so those are the major sounding intervals. The next intervals we're going to think about are the perfect intervals. Now, these are the intervals that are almost hollow sounding. Um, in Western music, they're perfectly consonant, okay? Um, and the only intervals that are perfect are the unison, that's, so that's the same note here, right? Two Cs. Uh, the fourth, C to F. See how hollow that sounds? Uh, the fifth, so C to G. And the octave, C to C. All right, now let's get into some of the minor sounding intervals, okay? I'm gonna still stick with the key of C, but I'm not gonna start on a C. I'm gonna start on the D. And I'm gonna go from D up a minor third. Okay, so how am I doing this? Key, key of C, no flats, no sharps, starting on the D, third, D, E, F. Let me play each note individually. Okay, and together. Okay, sounds a lot different than a major. Third. Let's deal with a minor six. Okay, so let's stay in the key of C again. I'm going to start on the note E. I'm going to count up six from E. E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, so from here to here. And together, it's going to be... Why is that a minor six? Because in the key of E, a major six would make that a C sharp. All right, I'm thinking in terms of keys, um, but you know, I wanted it minor. Okay, so I'm in the key of C, I'm forming different intervals. That's what's gonna happen right here. Now there's a lot more when it comes to intervals. We can talk about inversions, we could talk about extensions, we could talk about how, uh, you know, you have your octave here, you know, from C to C. And then the next note, D, we don't call that a second anymore. We call it a ninth, all right? Okay, we're dealing with extensions at that point. Um, there's a lot more to talk about, but all you need to know are the basics, how to form intervals, and also this next point, too. I mentioned before that you want to be able to form uh, scales. You need to know the difference between a whole step and a half step, okay? So a whole step is a full step. Okay, there's, uh, there's a chromatic tone in between. Okay, there's your full step right there, C to D. A half step, well, there's nothing in between. That's C to C sharp. 
Why is this important? Because let's say you want to form your major scales. Well, there's a pattern to major scales. It's whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Let me explain. So to get the sound of a major scale, I need a whole interval between the first two notes, a whole interval, whole interval between the next two notes, a half step between the next two, another whole step, another whole step, another whole step, and finally a half step. If you forget, just play a C scale, all the white keys from C to C, okay? Whole, 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 half, whole, 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 half. Understanding your intervals will help you to form, to construct many types of scales. It will help you to, to form and construct chords, like major chords here, where in the key of C, we'd have a C major chord. Let's do a triad. That's a three-note chord. So I have C, have E, and I have G. Together. I know that a major chord consists of the one, the three, and the five of the scale. C is one, D is two, E is three, F is four, G is five. If I want to form a minor chord, I know a minor chord is one, flat three, and five of the scale. So C is one, D is two, E flat is the flat three, and then G is the five again. So together, okay, is this making sense? Let me know, just type sense. All right, and for some of you, this may be very basic. Hey, that's really cool, but this is a good refresher. I know a lot of folks um, don't have formal training and may not quite understand intervals and how they relate, okay? Now, let me talk a little bit more as you're typing that word sense or maybe not, okay? Intervals, hearing them is key, all right? So if you can't hear an interval of a second, it's going to be really hard for you um, to, number one, play your instrument in tune, but also to construct these scales or these chords or whatever, okay? Now, next, in one of my future videos, I'm going to be reviewing Greg Fishman's new book, Intervals in Action. And it's all about intervals and practical applications of intervals in improvising. So I want this video to kind of be a precursor to that so that you understand uh, what's going on. Now, ideally, what would be best is if you had your own piano, uh, like I do behind me, so that you can practice hearing these intervals and these chords. But if you don't, hey, just do a Google search like I did, and you could find virtual pianos online. Now, I'd also encourage you to, in the beginning, write out the intervals, write out the chords. And you've got a lot of tools online. You've got something called MuseScore, which you could basically print sheet music, and you could print these things out and hear what they sound like. You also have Finale's version of Notepad, also free music notation software for Windows. You have from Sibelius free music notation software. Much nicer website, i got to say. Um, Sibelius first. Okay, that would be that website. Okay, so I hope this video gave you um, an answer with regard to one of the things that you absolutely must understand, which is intervals uh, when it comes to improvising. It's super important. And as I mentioned, in one of my next videos, I'll be, we'll be reviewing Greg Fishman's Intervals in Action. Now listen, if you're feeling a little stuck with your improvisation, and it doesn't have to be jazz, okay? Many players I know perform a variety of styles. I've got a free quiz that can identify the stage that you're at right now and give you your next best step for improvising, all right? And plus you'll get a free video lesson at the end of that. So I've got a link in the description below. Just click on the link, take the really short quiz, and then you'll get your free video lesson with your next best step. Hey, thanks for joining me. On that note, have a great day. Take care.